very warm welcome to everybody present over here thank you for taking your time and thank you for joining the webinar okay we'll be starting this webinar now and those who join let them join and they will be the part of webinar in the journey okay so firstly those who came on time thank you very much you are punctual and let's get started okay uh, before starting i'll i would like to talk about something related to tech nexus what tech nexus is so it is a monthly event monthly tech event that is organized with, by the team mind bowser so in this event we generally talk about some upgrade some sort of new learnings that we have inculcated a sort of new uh, like exposure that we have experienced so we love sharing and learning so this is a platform where we do the same and uh, if you want to catch up more like you want to get more about the updates so you can uh, get ahead with the LinkedIn uh, where Mind Browser like post every day or maybe once or twice. So you can catch up there and get ahead with the new webinars. So let's start get started with the topic of the presentation where we'll be focusing on healthcare efficiency with API Gateway. But before that, I think you must be introduced with the presentation there. So so let me introduce myself first. My name is Abhishek Vastav. I'm working with Mind Bowser as an associate software engineer. And today I'll be your host. I'll, I would like love to uh, call my esteemed colleague to introduce himself. Ashutosh, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ashutosh Mani, and I work as an associate, associate software engineer at Mind Bowser. Uh, I'm working here as a full stack developer. Uh, now let's invite Abhi to kick off the presentation with the table of content. Uh, he will guide us through the key topic uh, we will be covering today, and we uh, will uh, we we will discuss each things uh, one by one. So now Abhi can start. Thank you very much, Ashutosh, for the lovely presentation. Okay, so here we have the table of content where we have uh, the pointers written on the screen. So I'll not make it a boring presentation. We'll be, you know, covering everything with, uh, with a sort of demonstration. So let's, uh, let's take a bird eye view what we are going to talk about today in the whole journey. So we'll be kicking off our presentation with the introduction and we'll be talking about core Spring API Gateway and some sort of advantage. Why is it needed to be chosen? Uh, we'll also talk about low level, high level designing in the form of architecture for basically related to spring api gateway and also we will talk about some sort of key features we'll be demonstrating that how those key features work in action also we'll be talking about some additional like this is a big paradigm so we cannot not cover everything we'll be talking about additional things also in the after the conclusion we would have a sort of q a round once the q a round is over you would get a sort of surprise so I'll feel what uh, the surprise would be at the end. Maybe you need a sort of patience so that at the end you would get amazed. So let's uh, go ahead with the introduction. But uh, I feel that uh, before starting the introduction, I think my audience should get a sort of flavor of how uh, healthcare system works or maybe uh, let's get a taste of real world application. So on the screen, if you are able to see that there is a sort of image given and uh, you know, if you can understand what the image says, it is an architecture diagram where microservices are given. So uh, what I'll do, I, I'll explain a bit about it. So this is a small scale microservice, you know, architecture where we have around nine services that, uh, you know, demonstrate healthcare system. So we have EMR service, patient service, appointment service, and whatnot. There are so many services visible, visibly, you know, given. Now on the left hand side, we have a demonstration of how client is making the request so uh, this is representing the laptop image is representing basically the client it can be any client maybe ios android or web client even so this particular image shows uh, architecture of microservices but we get you know a sort of more observation in it now identify what what we can observe here so before starting with the api gateway i want to share why this particular architecture is not feasible without API gateway so i'm saying that it it won't work so we we basically you know uh, need to understand that this particular architecture works well when we have a small scale uh, system maybe we can say uh, some medium scale till medium scale system but when we go we, when we want to go up in the form of scalability maybe we may face some sort of limitation we 
me some sort of challenges those challenges are you know as follows like i have some i have pointed out some of them so like uh, we see that there is all the microservices there all the microservices are you know independently hosted or maybe you can say independently working so we can say that there is a direct communication between or among them so the client would have to have around nine base urls or i would say nine uh, like end URLs, endpoints for all the microservices. Suppose you are a front end guy handling nine base URLs at your front end side. That that, that is a tedious task. So here here there is a small catch where we can see that maybe we can do something to reduce it to one or two. Okay. Next one is service overload. So I'll not explain it with the just theoretical way. Let's uh, let we are talking about. Uh, healthcare system let's understand this scenario suppose there in a healthcare particular healthcare uh, uh, system where we have shift change there is a hospital where we have shift so there might be some time where people would be logging out by their by their system because their shift has ended and there might be the case that on the same uh, you know same time another shift is going to be started so people would be logging in so in that case what would happen the auth service the poor auth service would get overloaded would get overwhelmed so this particular scenario shows that there is a chance of service overloading. Your system might be just one surge away of you know overloading. Moreover, we'll talk about we have you know error propagation, where uh, you know what it means is error from one microservice would be propagated to another one. Maybe patient if patient service is down and it got some error, it would be you know propagated to the uh, EMR service because we are taking the data of patient from EMR service. So this can be a scenario. Also, we have security vulnerabilities. Like uh, as you see that all the microservices are independently working and they are open for the public. Like anybody can hint if they have a sort of uh, their URL, they can check the ports, they can hit the URL, they can get the data. Yes, you might be thinking that we can you know secure it with the logic that we will build in particular microservice, but we'll come on to that. But ultimately, they are in public scope. Everybody can see their URL. They are public URLs. Uh, the foremost part, the most important part that uh, that is challenges in authentication and authorization. So as you see that if uh, the case is like you are trying to secure your microservice or secure your system, a particular independent service with the help of some sort of logic like JWT or something, any sort of security logic. But don't you think that uh, you would have to do it for all the microservice? There are, you know, around nine, but maybe there there is the case that you got around 20, 200 or 2000. There might be the case. So in this case, would you repeatedly write the logic of security in all the microservices to make every every microservice secure? This is again a catch. So we'll be talking about, you know, how can we fix this particular limitation? How can we, you know, create a counterpart of it? Next, complex debugging. As we see that every microservice is calling each other, so error propagation was one of the scenarios that we discussed. So complex debugging would be a case. Like as a developer, I feel that if I don't get a centralized way of viewing at something, maybe debugging and jumping into every microservice to understand what the error is and where it came from would be a tedious task. So this sort of uh, thing would be visible when we'll go with this particular architecture. No centralization, as we discussed in many of the above points, that centralization is missing, centralization missing. So it is one of the things. And no rate limiting. Last point that is written that rate limiting is uh, not present here. And if we want to implement the logic also, it would be a different story. Uh, we will we'll not explain what rate limiting here. Many of us would be getting a sort of idea that what rate limiting is. But we'll be covering that part in the upcoming slide. So I hope you got a little bit of idea of real world application where we are demonstrating healthcare system and some sort of challenges about it in the form of microservices. Uh, so what I what we will talk about in today's uh, presentation in today's webinar that we'll we have the topic of API gateway. So what API gateway is is again a question. So I would like to explain what API gateway is. API gateway is nothing but a microservice, or you can simply say a service that serves between the client and your backend. So it is nothing but just a service. So what it does, it takes the request from the client side and routes the request to the backend side or other microservices, gets the response from there, returns it to the client. So it just facilitates between the client and other microservices. 
also it act as a centralized api traffic controller as it is written that it would create a sort of central logic we'll be talking more about it how it is creating a central traffic you know controlling mechanism we'll be talking about that in upcoming slide we have a good you know demonstration for you uh, moreover we'll talk we have you know in terms of api gateway we see that api request management see api gateway comes under api management only so whenever we use it whenever we go with api gateway it helps us to maintain our api requests in a very you know structured manner so this sort of mechanism can be seen here uh, moreover we'll be uh, you know uh, if we use api gateway we'll be able to have our system at this scalable stage where we can scale it to the extent where we will not struggle with a sort of user experience also we'll not be struggling in the form of any sort of scalability issue so scalability and flexibility is something that that is the power that we get from api gateway we'll also stream we'll be able to streamline microservice architecture as api gateway is doing centralization so the architecture uh, related issue would be fixed it would be streamlined uh, th this uh, sort of uh, explanation was about api gateway what api gateway is but uh, there are multiple api gateways in the market like uh, we have kong we have zool we have different you know multiple numerous we have but are we going to talk about each and every of them no i and i feel that it is not the you know right way so let's uh, introduce my the specific topic my friend would explain you better i think ashutosh you have the right uh, you know to explain it so i feel uh, let's go ahead with specific API gateway that uh, ashutosh would explain you Ashutosh, can you please? Sure, Abhi, and thank you very much uh, for such a uh, wonderful explanation and introduction. So up till now, our main goal is to understand how microservice architecture handle uh, in tradi traditional manner. Uh, in real world application, uh, with this, uh, you must have got the understanding of what problem we focus with that. And Abhi also conferentially explained what API Gateway is. Now our focus on Spring API Gateway, uh, which is a part of Spring Cloud project and built specifically for Spring-based microservice architecture. So uh, basically it is a Java-based open source framework. So Spring API Gateway is a part of Spring Cloud ecosystem, uh, which is well known for supporting microservice architecture in Java. Being one source, uh, it has large community and provides excellent flexibility. Uh, the gateway uh, leverages uh, the power of Spring Boot for quick setup uh, of uh, setup and ease of use. With this Spring uh, Flux and its core, it's fully utilized the uh, reactive uh, programming model, uh, enabling it to handle large number uh, concurrent requests in non-blocking or uh, as manner. Uh, this results in improved resource efficiency and scalability. And uh, the Spring library uh, we use here is a Spring Cloud Gateway library. Uh, this library offers a robust support uh, for routing and load balancing and uh, more uh, things uh, it provides uh, built specifically for the cloud-based microservice architecture. Uh, we'll see this library while the demo. Uh, then uh, finally, the important uh, feature that it provides uh, like non-blocking. Uh, using Spring uh, Webflux React to uh, programming model, Spring API Gateway is fully non-blocking, uh, meaning it can handle more concurrent requests than a traditional uh, blocking API Gateways. So uh, up till now, uh, we have seen what is Spring API Gateway. And uh, before that, we also see what uh, API Gateway is. But uh, when it comes to uh, managing APIs in microservice architecture, Spring API Gateway offers several advantages, and uh, I will uh, explain you with this uh, why Spring why a Spring API Gateway. So uh, with this, you will understand better why the need uh, why we need the Spring API Gateway. So uh, basically, Spring API Gateway provides a, a single entry point for all client requests. Uh, instead of client directly communicate with the multiple microservices. They sends request to the uh, gateway, uh, which routes them to this appropriate service. This centralization simplifies management and enhances uh, control over traffic 
making it easy to monitor, log, and secure all APIs call in one place. Uh, then uh, one of the core strength of Spring API Gateway is its ability to route a request if, uh, efficiently. You can uh, configure it to uh, forward requests based on the various conditions like URLs, headers, or uh, request parameters. It also supports load balancing, distributing uh, incoming traffic across multiple instances of microservices. Then uh, one of the important, which is a security features. Spring API Gateway uh, integrates seamlessly with uh, security protocols such as Auth2, JWT, and others authentication mechanism. And this allows you to enforce security policies at the gateway level, uh, ensuring that only authorized requests reach your backend service and then uh, resilience and fault tolerance um, with built-in support for resilience and uh, patterns a uh, spring api gateway makes your uh, system more robust features like circuit breakers timeouts uh, re uh, retries and fallbacks ensure that even if you some uh, even some microservice fail the overall system remains stable and uh, it provides customable uh, with filters and uh, uh, the, uh, the gateway offers powerful filtering capabilities, allowing you to customize the behavior of API requests. You can use pre filters to modify requests before they reach to the backend, and uh, post filters to modify response before they are sent back to the client. So, look how uh, wonderful it is. Then, uh, Spring API Gateway is easy to configure using simple pro properties and Java code. You can quickly define routes, security policies, and filters and uh, with the minimal set setup you are ready to uh, use spring api gateway so uh, we uh, can talk why uh, on this uh, like there are so many things uh, we can discuss on the same thing like why spring api gateway so uh, definitely uh, now uh, it's time to uh, ex explore the simple architecture and see how easily we can implement it uh, along with some key features. So now, Abhi, uh, please go ahead and explain uh, the architecture. And okay, thank you very much, Ashutosh, for the comprehensive explanation of why I choose API Gateway, why I choose Spring API Gateway. So people uh, do not feel this thing that uh, we are biased with it. It's not the case that uh, we have taken Spring API Gateway as our topic because we have a sort of you know deal with them. So no, it's not the case. Let's go ahead. Uh, that was a very nice explanation. Why is it needed? There are numerous advantages, but we have something you know really important to understand about it. So this is what the you know uh, the implementation of API Gateway is with the previous uh, example that we saw. Okay. So in the previous uh, slide that I you know uh, that we we saw that was around you know around microservices were there there was the client that was communicating directly to the microservices means they were public now if you see that in this particular architecture what is there there is only single entry point that is api gateway what is uh, what is happening here that the client requests are entertained or you know catered at this level where api gateway is standing and through the api gateway the requests are routed to the respected services and then if the client is authorized and other thing if then only the request would be routed and the response is written back to the client so this particular architecture shows that now your other services won't need you know to entertain the client request by themselves they would have something in the middle so i'll explain it with the help of very funny example like in the club when we go do we really uh, need that like do we really allow everybody to jump just jump onto the floor directly you know crossing the gate no we have a watchman or maybe bodyguard or maybe i would say what do we say that bouncers the right word bouncer people might be relating so we have some people uh, you know like making sure that the right person goes in the the authorized person goes in so the same uh, thing is done with the help of api gateway that the right person would let would be you know taken inside and others would be would not be entertained i would say so there are numerous things to talk about it that but we'll be focusing on main four things uh, that those are written uh, below uh, in this architecture one more thing to note here is that 
most of most of the logic of centralization like if you want to uh, have something in common for uh, around all nine, nine microservices that logic can be written in that if you want to you know block something block a user or block a sort of activity that can also be done so it helps us to make our system in a centralized manner so that is what the power of api gateway is we'll be talking in you know in explanation explanatory manner about all the features but we have limitation of time so we have chosen around four key features of api gateway that we'll demonstrate here and others we can discuss you can also read you can also reach out to us for that but four key features are request routing centralized authentication monitoring and logging and rate limiting so these are the four features that we are going to talk about we will see the demo of it also uh, rest we'll discuss and we, we can catch up later about them so uh, i think without wasting the time i think you must be waiting for the demo like your presentation pair is saying continuously we'll be seeing demo we'll be seeing demo and it's more then uh, 20 minutes now still you didn't see the demo but i think i'll explain it with the help of example so first one is request routing i think i feel that my friend can explain it better ashutosh would you like to try explaining my, uh, request routing to our audience maybe they are waiting for that sure abhi so uh, i th i think abhi has given you a very nice overview on the architecture of the uh, spring uh, api gateway like it was a basic architecture but uh, the main uh, core uh, thing uh, and related to it is is the simple and you must have understood it uh, now uh, uh, the uh, le now let's discuss about the request routing so a uh, request routing is a key uh, feature of the spring api gateway Uh, ensuring that requests are uh, directed to the right uh, microservices efficiently let's go to the essential component uh, that makes request routing so powerful so the main component uh, the main feature that request route routing provides is the dynamic routing so the uh, dynamic routing means that the api it we can intelligently decide which service to route the request to uh, based on the runtime conditions like request parameters hr uh, headers and url path Uh, then uh, the another important is the load balancing. The Spring API gateway supports built-in load balancing. Uh, it distributes incoming requests up uh, across multiple instances of the service, uh, ensuring that no single instance gets overloaded. And uh, the route configuration that is main uh, uh, thing uh, in this uh, route uh, request routing. The uh, Spring API gateway allows flexible route uh, configuration. You can uh, define which microservice should handle a uh, specific path or pattern based on the URL segment, request header, or parameters. And it is very easy to configure and understand. Uh, this overview uh, on what request routing is. Now, uh, let's. Uh, it's time is, uh, to the demo. You all must be waiting for it. Now. Uh, Let's dive into the code uh, configuration and demo to see how Spring API Gateway uh, efficiently routes the request to the appropriate microservice. Uh, for this demo, we are using VS Code. Let Let's open the project and in our setup, we have defined uh, four microservices. Like you can see there, like patient, EMR, billing, and a notification. now uh, let's uh, i'm let's open the dot yml file so basically if you are a spring developer you must know the uh, what dot yml file is so it is basically a, a property or configuration file here uh, we define all the configuration that required in the spring project so uh, i will uh, uh, go directly to the uh, what required for the uh, route configuration uh, so like uh, here you can see id uri uh, predicates so basically id is uh, each microservice is identify the id uh, this uh, you are then you uh, this define service address where the request will be forwarded and uh, predicates uh, the conditions that determine which microservice should handle a, a request based on uh, url path uh, this sim simple setups allows routing uh, to hundreds or even thousands thousands of microservices 
uh, with this request route based on the specific requirement. Uh, for simplicity, each microservice has a basic health check controller. Uh, yeah, I will show you the controller for any microservice so that you will get more understanding of it. So you can uh, see here, uh, there is a control which uh, like a very, a very simple control. We have just returning our mass message for the depo demonstration purpose. So similarly, in Microsoft, we have uh, like S1, S2, S3, and uh, then same controller for the health check. So uh, uh, the API gateway is running on port uh, 8075. So uh, let's make a request to the gateway and see how forward uh, forwards to the provide microservices. Uh, for making a request, I'm using Postman. So let's open it first. And uh, okay, now uh, you can see here we have defined uh, multiple. Uh, uh, we have multiple microservices, but now we are calling uh, any microservice. Like we'll send a request with uh, ES4 path and as expected we got the response for the patient service so uh, that means that we have successfully uh, implemented the request routing so you can see here uh, the our ba uh, our uh, base url is running on 8075 but even the s4 is running on different port we have successfully uh, get the response from that so similarly, uh, just to verify, uh, we'll call the other uh, microservices one by one, like yes one from the same uh, base URL. Yes one, and then now I uh, will call yes two uh, microservice. So similarly, we got the successful songs from there as well. So there are uh, like so basically, uh, we have successfully. Uh, got the all the responses from all microservices with the same base url so this uh, demo successfully shows how the spring api gateway can be used to route request to multiple uh, microservices based on the configuration uh, making it easy to manage even complex system with the minimal setup so now i think the time is to um, move towards the uh, another feature so uh, then the next and the next feature that i would really want to discuss is the centralized authentication uh, so as a developer our primary goal is to create system that is secure for every angle while also being easy to manage and implement a spring provides a powerful solution to address both these needs by enabling centralized security management uh, that is uh, both scalable and efficient so this feature is pivotal for ensuring the security and integrity of your microservice architecture. So uh, basically, uh, it implements centralized authentication and authorization. As feature name itself describes, by centralizing both authentication and authorization, we can streamline the management of uh, user identities and permissions. So then also it uh, ensures robust security uh, we'll see actual uh, uh, in demo how uh, robust it is and it also helps maintain maintain regulatory and compliance uh, so in many industries especially health sectors compliance and uh, regulations such as gd or uh, hipaa is essential and uh, centralized authentication allows uh, uh, organization to implement consistent auth authentication policies so um, without wasting your time now let's move to the demo where we will demonstrate how the API gateway handles authentication centrally. So uh, we will pass token from the header of the request. Like uh, we'll, I will just first, I will uh, open the uh, VS code first. We'll see whether the gateway can properly process and authorize our request or not. Uh, so uh, like I will uh, quickly go uh, uh, walk you through the configuration. So in this configuration, we have defined the security setup as a part of Spring Codebase, including the security configuration class. We also enable JWT authentication, where the API gateway will validate token. For simplicity, in this demo, we are using Google uh, SSO. 
to handle ID tokens, but you can integrate any uh, authentic authentication provider or custom solution based on your requirement so i will just quickly uh, give you information on what jw2k is maybe uh, maybe of many of us uh, know what jw2k is but for them uh, who um, don't know uh, about the jw2k so in this scenario we are using uh, jwk uh, which is a crucial in uh, securing jw uh, based system jw2k is a standard format for representing uh, cryptographic uh, keys on json object along the api gateway to fetch and validate token dynamically uh, so uh, basically this is uh, just quick information about the jwk because currently we are using that and so now uh, uh, I will also show what can configuration we have made. Like we simply added uh, custom uh, methods for the uh, validation of that uh, token. And now uh, I will go to the postman. And uh, we'll first make a request using expired token through postman. Like we have one token already added here we'll call the and then i then i make a request and uh, as uh, expected uh, we'll uh, we get a uh, response uh, indicating that the token is uh, expired uh, confirming that authentication is working but now uh, we need to check whether it is working with the uh, a token or not so for that uh, next uh, that i will refresh uh, the token for the google from the google playground so basically the uh, google playground is the uh, like developers tool where we can uh, refresh the token and get the test token so we are currently using it so i will just refresh the token from the google Play playground i think i need to log in again for that just a minute so okay so now uh, we have the uh, access token so this time i will just verifying it with the jwt is there so i think uh, there is a problem i will just verifying with the jwt is okay now and uh, you can see here now i will call it again and you can see here we have got the success re response and that means we have successfully implemented authentication and I'll, I'll just finally uh, just for the confirmation i will uh, make make a same request with the temper token i will just uh, update this token or and call the api gateway again so we have got the uh, error response here that the verification failed that means uh, the this implementation is working so similarly, we will call any other microservice with uh, current uh, valid token and we will definitely get the response. So uh, now uh, it's time to dive uh, deeper into two other important features, rate limiting and monitoring and logging uh, with the API gateway. For that, I will invite my colleague Abhi to walk you through the this concept and demonstrate them in action. So stage is you or Abhi.
So I was talking about how beautifully Ashutosh explained that uh, uh, that API gateway can help us to authorize the request at a very central level. That is what uh, centralization, uh, you know, is that we change something at one end, we impose something at one end, and it would be for all the other things. So we have uh, beautifully, you know, seen how that uh, request routing happens in API gateway and how uh, other things happen. But we have a long way to go. We have rate limiting and other things also. So uh, let's understand what rate limiting is. This is our uh, next feature. So I'll explain uh, rate limiting with an example. It is just, it is nothing but the count of like how many times a person can knock on your door. So in simple words, I'll say that rate limiting is nothing but number of times a user can call your API in a particular time frame. So what we understand by this uh, bookish definition that it somehow prevents us for calling in resource extensive API or some APIs in a repeated manner. So if you guys wonder that why rate limiting is important, so you can uh, take an example of DDoS attack or brute force attack, where hackers try continuously uh, calling your APIs where they have intention to uh, make your system down or maybe they want to hack your system. So in that case, what they try, they try a brute force, uh, you know, attack. So in that in that case, rate limiting would be the phenomenal, you know, choice where choosing which you would be able to save your system and make your users comfortable with the uptime. So that was an overview of what rate limiting is. Other points are also mentioned. You can uh, see that it prevents us, you know, calling the API excessively. It also allows fair resource allocation where the resource is intensive APIs, like we talk about healthcare system. In the healthcare system, there are some APIs where medical records are fetched. So would you like uh, your users to suffer because of one malicious user who is trying continuously to call the API without any input? And even uh, let's take example of other APIs here. We have cost included in it, like for uh, OTP, maybe we can say one-time passwords. Do you want your uh, user to uh, misuse that particular feature and make your cost increased. That That is all about abuse prevention. That is our next point. So rate limiting does a lot, many things. Ultimately, it stabilizes your system. It maintains your stability of your system. So it also Im improves user experience. Uh, ultimately, if you have your stable and maintained system, your user would be experienced in a very you know smooth manner. No, no glitch would be there. And all, all around you would have a reliability and enhanced enhanced service. So that was a sort of explanation of what rate limiting is. I would love to see the same thing in demo and I would and we would love to show you the same thing in de demonstration. So let's jump into the demo part where uh, we'll be checking the code, how hard or how easy the implementation of rate limiting in API Gateway is. So in the VS code, if I open, uh, YAML file, I think it is already open. So if you see here that uh, um, Ashutosh was also explaining you that here we have ID routes and predicates. So where we we uh, just configured what all microservices are connected with this particular API gateway. Uh, but below that, if you see that we have configuration of our filters, what filter is actually, it is something that uh, is applied in between, in the on the go or on the fly, if you say. So there are multiple ways of implementing rate limiting. There are multiple algorithm that is a topic in itself. But uh, by default, we have token bucket algorithm. If you guys are aware of this thing. So we have token bucket algorithm where a fixed number of token is given to a user for the particular time frame and per request like those tokens are taken out. So that particular algorithm I'm also using by default for showing you uh, how rate limiting works. So this is simple configuration. Also, we have one more thing uh, to be noted here that how do you identify that this particular user has made five requests, 10 requests or 500 requests. For that, we need a user key resolver, like we need to identify user uniquely. Uh, there is small configuration for the same. So here what we are doing, uh, we are using uh, like Spring framework and we are taking out the address, the host IP, I would say. So on the basis of which we are uh, defining the user in a unique way that this particular user has made these requests. So this was all about how to configure rate limiting in your system. 
Now let's jump into the Postman. We'll see how things work in action. If you see here, we have already made you know, some sort of work so that your time would be saved. So I have created a demo inside rate limiting folder where uh, already present URL is kept here. So that URL would be called on S2 service. I think we need to check what S2 service is. Let's check it in the YAML file. So S2 service is notification service. Okay, so if I call it one time, everything is okay. But suppose I'm a mal malicious user and I have some bad intention uh, to hack the system. So what I'll, I'll try, I'll try brute force. So uh, to demonstrate how repeatedly the API can be called, what I'm doing, I'm running the folder. Iterations are going to be 10. Uh, so this fold, whatever APIs are in this folder would be called 10 times. So let's try running it. What, what we can see here that the API is called first time and we got 200 response. Then it is called second time iteration two, then third, fourth, and fifth. So that was uh, the uh, you know tolerance of our system. That was the limit that we set in our system that these many requests are okay for this particular time frame that a user can make. But after that, when the per the person did too much of making requests, so we started giving him 429 errors. So 429 basically just too many error, too many request error error code. So then the the user started getting even higher, higher the user started getting 429 where uh, now with this example you can easily understand that nobody can make the request as per his choice it the control would be in your hand if you implement this thing and this thing can be easily implemented with the help of api gateway as you saw in the configuration that was a small demonstration how rate limiting works we saw an action that nobody had in this particular way we can't say more about hackers there are a lot many other things but we secured uh, the brute force attack and ddos attack where continuous uh, you know trial were taken now let's uh, get ahead with this topic and uh, move to the another one uh, the last one is monitoring and logging and i would say it is the most important one so uh, what why are we saying that it is the most important one that that everybody or you know, even the CXO level people, not only I'm talking about developers or the product owners, I'm talking about CXOs where they want to have real time system insight. They want to understand how the system is performing, what sort of uh, activities are taking place on your particular system. So for taking that bird eye view, for taking that, you know, uh, like wholesome image of our system, we require this particular, or I would say this powerful feature monitoring and logging. So what it does, it uh, it also helps us to detect the issue because if we detect the issue, we'll be able to fix that. So it not only helps those those who want to have uh, an, an insight or real time insight, but also the developer would be benefited by it because they'll get the issue detected early and then it would be solved. Uh, we'll also be able to track the performance of our system if we implement it. Uh, security compliance would be there as you saw that we got few 200 and after that 429 errors in the last example uh, maybe we can track that how many times this particular scenario is happening so we can uh, make some sort of data driven driven decisions out of it so whatever data comes from it would be able would be you know uh, would be proven as a strong base to create better decision to Im implement more functionality in it so that was an overview of monitoring and logging it improves of operational efficiency uh, about the system. So that was a theoretical part. Uh, like people must be wondering that monitoring and logging is a like umbrella term. There is multiple way, there are multiple ways to do the same. We can even go with uh, like logger file even, where we just print the log in the file. Monitoring won't, won't be there, but logging can happen in that case. Uh, there are multiple ways we also say the same but for this particular presentation i'll say for this particular uh, you know example we are using grafana and prometheus uh, we'll we'll walk walk you through about the configuration of it so that you will understand it was also easy for us to explain or to implement it uh, moreover that as we we are going going ahead with the demo uh, let me just uh, share one thing that grafana and prometheus takes a bit of time to get started or to you know 
to just come in action. So what we have done to save the time, we have already uh, just started the Docker and showed you. So I'll I'll just walk you through with the code, how easy the configuration of in the form of code was it, and just uh, Docker I installed in my system so that you can run it. So uh, one one more information here is we are not running localhost because it wants uh, an IP. So this this was the IP that we configured. Uh, let me share you uh, the Prometheus YAML. So what, what is happening here that we are targeting our API gateway as a service to get the real time system in, inside. Also, we are uh, setting five seconds as the timeout. We'll, we'll understand in, uh, in, the, in the form of demo also. But what I'll, I'll suggest that please go through its documentation. You will uh, get more out of it. So uh, on a very higher level, I'll say that Grafana would run on 3000 and uh, Prometheus would be running on 1990. So let's move ahead with uh, its dashboard. So here we have Prometheus running where our Spring API gateway is visible as an endpoint, as in Spring, Spring Executor. It is up and running and the state can be seen here. So that was, uh, this is the uh, dashboard of Prometheus. We take, took Prometheus as the data source in our Grafana dashboard. This is our Grafana dashboard. This is useless. Let's remove it. Okay. So it was already up and running. So what we can see here that there are some requests that we have already made. And this particular system requires us to configure the dashboard. And configuring dashboard is not a task of around one or two or 10 minutes. So it takes a bit of time, but what we have done, we have just showed you a little bit of demonstration. Okay. Now, if you see here that we, we have around uh, two requests that came of 500 errors and then 200 errors. So this was an overview, like whatever happening is in our uh, API gateway is printed here or is visible here. We can even make much interactive dashboard. We can take much outcome of it but for this demo i'll say that this much i think would be sufficient to understand that configuring grafana is a good choice to monitor our progress of our health system or health of our health system uh, now let's be back to our main track where we were talking about other features so uh, as we move ahead to the presentation we have seen around four things uh, like let's go ahead with the presentation let's get to know what is with us I think Ashbush might, might be getting bored that I, I talked a lot about Grafana and uh, rate limiting. I think Ashutosh has something to share. Ashutosh, what do you have? Can you please share? Uh, no, Abhi, uh, like it was uh, very well interesting. And actu actually, our uh, audience must have got some really uh, comprehensive guide on the with this uh, uh, such nice demo. But uh, as uh, that, because of as the time, limitations we have we are moving towards the next things uh, which are which is uh, benefits uh, for this uh, uh, additional benefits actually uh, which we will explain in terms of features but uh, we are not going uh, going to give you a demo on it and like there are uh, uh, there is a like never end for this feature because uh, the ability that a spring api cloud uh, gateway has like they, it provides new uh, numerous uh, features so now uh, like i will uh, just uh, give you quick uh, overview uh, about uh, this uh, some important features like ip blocking uh, this pre uh, these features are allowed the api gateway to uh, block uh, restricted access to a specific ip address then the encryption and decryption uh, and uh, I think uh, with the uh, name, uh, all these name describes uh, what the this uh, benefits or this feature provides. The API gateway can also handle secure data transmission by uh, uh, encrypting and re uh, uh, encrypting requests and response. Then the uh, resilience and fault tolerance, and then cir uh, circuit breakers, and then uh, API versioning. So basically, uh, the API versioning. Uh, is uh, uh, it allows the API gateway to manage multiple uh, versions of uh, an API uh, simultaneously. 
uh, so uh, there are uh, numerous special I, I will suggest you to uh, refer to the documentation and you will get some more insight and really wonderful uh, things related to the API gateway and uh, now uh, as uh, uh, we have uh, up till now we did discuss so many things now as we are uh, wrap up let's conclude the presentation uh, throughout this session we have not only learned the fundamentals of the API gateway but uh, yeah, we, you uh, have also uh, gained practical uh, and hands-on experience in several uh, key areas we demonstrated how the dynamically uh, route traffic to the different microservices, then how to implement a gateway le uh, level authentication mechanism for uh, securing APIs. We leverage Grafana and Prometheus AS for real time traffic uh, monitoring and logging. Uh, also, showcase rate limiting to efficiently control traffic flow. Uh, with this knowledge, you now must have a clearly understanding of how manage uh, large scale uh, services and complex architecture uh, efficiently using the Spring API Gateway. Uh, I will again suggest you to uh, refer to the document uh, documentation of the Spring API Gateway to get more insight of it. Uh, we explained you that uh, we shared that we have a sort of surprise for you. So the surprise is this one that uh, we were talking about the certificate, but we have something extra for you. So this is going to be the Code Grip subscription, uh, but the, I'll I'll have to explain you first what Code Grip is. So Code Grip is an, a, a single point platform that analyzes your code, identifies code duplication, will cover your code in the form of all sort of smells uh, or issues related to duplication and all. So it is a sort of code reviewing, uh, you know, a tool, or I would say uh, a tool that would help you to write a quality code. We talk about, you know, coding. So we talk about quality and standardization. So that that would happen with the help of code grip. So this is going to be given to you or if you are the winner of this quiz so as you can see on the screen there are multiple things written related to it that it 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 helps us to analyze code it uh, is it makes our code um, looks great in the form of its quality it automates code review process as if you are working as a manager and you might face some sort of pr so you know issue that multiple prs are there and you would have to review thousands of lines of code but it it would be a handy tool if you get you know a dashboard out of it and would understand how uh, the particular sort of code is written what is its grade so there is a lot to talk about it maybe you can check out its website where you can uh, see what all features are given on that so we'll not be an announcing winner in this particular presentation you would get a sort of you know a message or reminder out of it uh, let's let's move ahead with the next thing as uh, we are going to talk about job opportunities and mind browser so maybe i think uh, ashutosh can explain it better so uh, as a um, mind browser uh, we have uh, several uh, job opportunities so currently we have technical project manager uh, qa automation uh, modern developer and business consultant uh, so if you want to apply for this or if you have anyone uh, who is uh, uh, better or searching for these roles, you can definitely go to the LinkedIn and apply for, apply for this post. So now, uh, next. So, so I think uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, attending this uh, presentation and uh, uh, we are providing you our uh, email ids uh, you can uh, definitely con uh, reach out to us at any time and we'll uh, try our best to uh, give uh, you response as soon as uh, possible yes everybody you can uh, you know get connected with us with this email address and if you have some questions left in your brain jumping out so maybe you can uh, write an email to us so that we can help you better also if you want to discuss some more uh, you know opportunities to work together also this email would work better for this so thank you very much for attending this webinar uh, have a great day ahead